strength of character used to be about the ability to deal with negative stuff without just falling to pieces at the first sign of distress. Oh, but there shouldn't be a stigma around depression anymore. That's mean. Yes, there should. That's right. This guy is trying to tell us about the truth about depression. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And I try to increase awareness and decrease the stigma, and I pull things from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental health as well as spread some awareness. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So, first off, I guess I'm glad to announce Elvis the Alien is back. He's back. <laughs> uh, I, I love Elvis. I, uh, when my girlfriend Tristan introduced me to him, I binge watched a bunch of his stuff. And he's been kind of up and down, you know, just for me personally, right? But this one that he just did on Paul Joseph Watson, I'm like, yes, Elvis is back. He is back in my good side. But yeah, excellent video. Uh, I was telling Tristan too, like when I watch somebody like Elvis, I'm like, you know, like, I, I like that there's YouTubers out there that can do this because that's not what I do, right? And I can just sit there and laugh and just, and watch this, right? But anyways, he inspired me to make this video. Um, so Paul Joseph Watson, for those of you who don't know, he is part of the uh, Alex Jones crew over at InfoWars, right? And he, he like, just go watch, go watch Elvis the Aliens video. I won't go into too many specifics, but this guy is, he's an issue, right? And he's always trying to like raise controversy and trigger people and stuff. And the problem is, and what y'all need to learn from this is, when you're constantly trying to do that, you sound, you sound stupid, right? So like, I guess, I guess I want to start out the tone of this video by like stating the irony, the, the pure irony the fact that the guy who literally made a video is trying to explain how love is a mental illness is the same guy trying to tell us the quote unquote truth about depression. For most of history, romantic love was considered a disease that you had to catch and get over. Like, let that sink in for a second, okay? The guy is trying to argue that love is a mental illness and depression is pretty much fake. This is a video that I actually wanted to do uh, a while ago and I didn't really know the timing of it because the video that Paul Joseph Watson made was like a year old. So since Elvis did this, I'm like, oh, hey, maybe the algorithm will help push this video out because Paul Joseph Watson made this Truth About Depression video about a year ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down and explain how wrong he is about depression. He's one of the reasons why the, the stigma is out there and you know, here in the United States, the elections are coming up, the midterms and all that. And like, I, I do think it's important to understand how politics and mental health, you know, like they, they, they affect one another, right? So when you have somebody like Paul Joseph Watson, who is very, very conservative, and I'm not saying all conservatives are like that, but when their beliefs are like this, then think about what that's going to do to mental health care, all right? So. I'm gonna break down, I wrote down like 20 clips, and I'm gonna break down all the ways he's wrong. Now a form of virtue signaling to constantly drone on about how depressed you are. You see it all over YouTube, these sniveling hug and confess videos made by privileged millennial brats who haven't had a proper day of hardship in their entire lives. The biggest misconception about this is that people with depression are just whiners, right? And they've never experienced a day of hardship in their life. Now this is just, just inaccurate. Like, here's a great example, okay? Here's a great example of it. Did you know that according to the National Institute of Health, that 50% of people with post-traumatic stress disorder also have major depressive disorder, okay? So like when he's saying that these are just like whiny millennials who have never experienced hardship in their life, like he does not understand that depression is often like part of another mental illness for people who have been abused or had a traumatic experience, right? Anxiety disorders. A lot of people with anxiety disorders also have depression. So it isn't just people whining to be cool. They try to one-up each other for depression brownie points with endless blubber fests about their poor privileged lives. Meanwhile, people living in African mud huts literally give zero f 
Max maladjustment is now trendy. This is just one of the worst things that, and it, it's not even just like people who don't understand depression, but it's also people with depression, right? So like, there's this, this misconception that like, oh, well your life is better than the worst persons, so you have no right to be depressed. Like, everybody lives in their own reality. For example, as Elvis pointed out multiple times, Paul Joseph Watson thinks he's like the coolest kid on the block, right? Uh, I mean, we all know how cool you are, Paul, but you don't have to you have to flex that hard, dude. He is living in his own reality, okay? So just because you are not a starving child in Africa does not mean you cannot struggle with depression, okay? In the same way that it's like you can't have, you know, a disease that someone else has a worse disease. Like, that's not how this thing works. But it's also important for anybody struggling with depression to know that it's okay to go get help. It doesn't matter that your life isn't quote unquote as bad as somebody else's. Like, let's go back to PTSD as an example, a prime example. What may be traumatic for one person is not traumatic to the other. That doesn't mean that the person that it was traumatic for does not have a right to be traumatized. Depression has become the new fat pride movement. Depression has become the new fat pride movement. Like, uh, a lot of you know me, I've done a ton of videos on just like, body positivity, I've done videos about like, is the, uh, you know, mental illness trendy and stuff. But like, here's, here's the thing too, like, I, I would say yes and no. One of the problems that I, I take with a lot of people, you know, who put their opinions out there is they make these huge blanket statements, right? And just saying that mental illness as a whole is like trendy or trying to be cool, no. It's case by case, you know what I mean? Like I literally just talked about it in my video about Scotty Sire, where like, yeah, some people latch onto this as part of their identity. So that's one of the reasons I make these videos to try to decrease the stigma and talk about, you know, like kind of the language we use around it. Like, are you really nervous? Or are you anxious, right? Are you sad or are you depressed? And one of the issues I think Paul Joseph Watson has is that he intertwines a lot of these things together, right? So if somebody's just like, hey, I had a bad day, in his crazy brain, he's like, oh, 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 more people are depressed. No, they didn't say they were depressed. They just said they had a bad day. Safe turned us into complete pussies because pussies are easier to push around and manipulate. I just wanna point out on a side note that you can always tell conspiracy theorists by how they always say like, they want you to do this, they want you to do that, but they never tell you who they are. Like, Paul, who is them? Who are they? Like, you can't just throw that out there. Logically, the depression epidemic makes no sense. By every single objective factor, it's never been a better time to be a human being living in the West. Oh my God, this part, like, oh my God. Like, is this Nicole Arbor's brother? Like, are they related? Are they like in a thing together? Only one person can get you out of depression, and that is you. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Oh no, I'm holding you accountable for your own feelings. They're like, what do you mean? Like, it is crazy to think like, you don't have a right to depress, be depressed because we have cell phones today. Like, what? What? Depression was barely even a thing. It wasn't even talked about 50 or 60 years ago. So why is everyone so depressed now when we've got it so much easier? And he's asking like why people are more depressed now than ever before. Like one of them is, is because people have easier access to people like you, which makes us depressed. That was a joke, but I had to just uh, add that little jab in there. But there's a multitude of reasons, a multitude of reasons. So one of them is, is that it may seem seem like it's, it's more than it's ever been before, but just because we have more access to people and people talking, right? Like back before, uh, you know, social media and everything like that, like if you were depressed or sad, like whatever it was, like how many people were gonna know? Like the people in your neighborhood, maybe only the people in your house. And you also gotta think about all the generations before that taught you not uh, how to, uh, you know, suppress your feelings and, you know, or be a man and, you know, it's becoming a little bit more normalized to just talk about these things. That's one of the reasons why channels like mine exist to increase awareness and kind of normalize this conversation. But there are a million other reasons for like why depression is more prevalent than ever before. Um, same reason with anxiety, okay? But anyway, I did an entire book review on a book called Lost Connections. I highly recommend you check that out. It's because you've been completely misled about what depression actually is. Depression is nothing more than dissatisfaction with life. What do you mean depression is just nothing more than dissatisfaction with life? Like, that is just like minimizing it 
like so so much right like oh no you're, that's not that's not a deadly bullet wound that was just a puncture of your skin you know like don't minimize this that's not a broken bone your bones just not in the same way that it was before like why, like, quit minimizing it. Like, when somebody's having a panic attack, that, that's like the people say, like, just calm down. Or for people with depression, just cheer up. Which it's the responsibility of the doctor to alleviate by medical means. And they're only too happy to, often being paid to do so, under the insane justification that depression is a chemical imbalance. Which it isn't. They're right here when he says it's not a chemical imbalance. So... Just so you know, there, there are different debates and different studies and theories about this, but one thing I wanna point out about Paul Joseph Watson is he will only he will only use scientific evidence if it favors his argument. It's important to stress that long-term stable love is completely distinct from new romantic love because it lights up different areas of the brain. Okay, I don't watch the guy that much, but the few times I have had the displeasure of seeing him babble, he will only use science or quotes or whatever that that uh, that clearly have a confirmation bias with them, right? So yes, there is such thing as a chemical imbalance, all right? Now, the other thing is, is that as somebody who tries to be very open and honest and everything like that, like it's important to understand that it's not always a chemical imbalance, okay? so. Some of what he says is not incorrect, but the way he delivers it is like a D-bag, all right? So that's why we need to talk about this stuff. So in this video, he's very antidepressant. You can't eliminate dissatisfaction with your life by taking pills. Yeah, like, I absolutely agree. Antidepressants cannot cure depression. I tell people that all the time. Anti-anxiety pills cannot cure anxiety. But the way this works is that they bring you up to a base level, okay? They bring you to a base level, okay? So like SSRIs, they help create serotonin, which helps give you pleasure, joy, motivation, and all of that. So if the brain is not properly creating that, then these help get you up to a base level, all right? So that is why this next point he makes is really dumb. The only cure is to change the way you live your life, to make better decisions, to create value, excitement, and authenticity in your life. Work on projects, start businesses, read, absorb worthwhile information. But I think Elvis, he said it perfectly right here. Paul, someone who is depressed does not see the point in starting a business, or going on an adventure, or even reading a book, like that might be too much. Yes, 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 yes. That is the issue with depression. Like we don't have, like when you're in that depression, you don't have the motivation to just go do this thing, to do the things that give you happiness, to do the things that give you joy, right? To do the things that can create a, a better life for yourself. So sometimes you need a jump start. And no, it's not all about the pills, but that for many people is part of the solution. So like there've been many studies about pills and placebo placebo effects and all of that, which I might have made a video on, I can't remember. But like, it's just important to understand the truth, like the actual truth about depression, rather than this guy's silly conspiracy opinions. You're not going to achieve self-actualization by taking pills or having endless conversations with therapists most of whom don't give a damn about you anyway. So this last ridiculous clip, it's like, oh, therapists don't care about you. Like, what always makes me chuckle about people who call other people out for virtue signaling is how often they virtue signal. Because if you, if you look at what he's actually saying is, he's saying therapists don't even care about you. So what he's implying is, is that he actually cares about you, or why would he make this video? You see what I mean? But anyways, I've worked in mental health for years now and yeah i'll tell you some care some therapists might not care about you there's others who can't sleep at night because they do care way too much you know what i mean but like get out of here with your nonsense like paul jacob jingle Heimer, schmidt like whatever dude um but anyways like thank you elvis the alien for bringing to light this guy again this is a guy who thinks love is a mental illness <laughs> and tried to use scientific backing for it it was ridiculous elvis makes fun of him in his video about that but anyways, anyways, I would love to know your thoughts, your comments, like, 
is is this stigma is this something that's affected you in your life and your depression and people not understanding like let me know down in the comments below anyways that's all i got for you with this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell and a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you are all amazing and if you would like to help me increase awareness and kind of quiet down the noise of people like paul hit that little patreon uh icon right there all right thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time